Well, go ahead and grab your notes, your Bible, your COH app, however you engage in God's Word during this time, because we're going to be jumping right on in. Uh, We are in week two of a series, Word of God Speak. And if you were here with us last week, Pastor Dale, he began this sermon series of how we can hear God's voice in God's Word. And this is a normal routine. If you've been a part of Community of Hope for any length of time throughout the summer, we set some time aside to really understand as a group of believers, how can we hear God's voice in God's word? And if you were here last week, we were streaming to all of our other campuses coming as one church in multiple locations, and he did a great job. And two of the things that I thought were so interesting and so true is he said, hearing God's voice, it's not just for a select few. And I was meeting with someone the other week, and he said, you know, Brandon, can you pray for me? Because I know if you pray that it will happen. And we were having this cup of coffee, and I had to explain to him, that's not how this works. Uh, I wish it was, but it's, it's not. That we all have a direct line to God. That those who are pastors and preachers and teachers, we don't have some sort of special connection, but we all have access to God 24-7. And that we hear his voice through his word. And the second thing that he said last week that I was so fascinating is that hearing God's voice isn't for people who are just weird. Because you've met those people. You've met those weird people, some of those weird Christians. If you've never met them, you're probably that person. Okay? I hate to tell you this morning. But we've, we ran into them, you know, and, and it's kind of awkward if you're talking with someone and they say, yeah, well, God told me to say this. And then you're kind of like, all right, my radar is up. But actually, when we read in Scripture is that hearing God's voice is incredibly normal. That it's one of the most natural things as children of God to do is to hear our Father's voice. And so all throughout this series, we're going to be learning what does it mean to be able to hear God's voice in God's word. And I love one of the greatest truths as being a follower of Christ is that we get to have a relationship with the one true God. And just like any other relationship, it involves communication. Like any relationship you have with your spouse or your kids or your boss, it requires that you communicate or else that relationship will cease to exist. And the same is true in our relationship with Christ. That it's a conversation that we begin to have in that he speaks and he speaks in his word. He speaks through the Holy Spirit and yes, he even speaks in prayer. But I don't know about you, there are many voices that I hear throughout a day. When I think about all the different voices that I hear, here's some of them that I wrote down that I thought maybe you do as well. I hear the voice of my mother almost every day, my brother, my wife, my neighbors, friends, bosses, coworkers, podcast hosts, YouTube, I love YouTube, TV personalities, right? The list goes on and on and on. We have an infinite amount of voices that we can listen to. But maybe you've noticed this like I've noticed this, depending on who's speaking, I will listen differently. Like uh, recently I was working on Haley's car and my mom was giving me some tips of what I should do. And then I was, yeah, you know where this is going. And then I was watching uh, on YouTube this guy who was a mechanic for 20 plus years, you know, showing me what size wrench, this and that. And, you know, I listened to both, but maybe I paid attention to one more than the other. (laughs) Right? They hold different weight. Voices hold different weight in our lives. And I was thinking about this, I'm a lover of history, and it reminded me of this story where uh, President uh, Franklin Roosevelt, he wanted to conduct this experiment. And so he had this receiving line at the White House, and he was going to conduct this experiment that he was going to say a phrase and see if anyone noticed what he was saying. And this was the phrase that he muttered as he was meeting people. He said this, I murdered my grandmother this morning. This is, you can look this up, he actually said this. And he wanted to see if people would respond. And this is where people's response, this is what he wrote down. You can't make it up, I love it. They were so in awe of his presence, they responded with statements such as, wonderful, Mr. President. (laughs) We're praying for you, Mr. President. God bless you, Mr. President. And as some of the ambassadors were filing in, the one from Bolivia, he overheard what he was saying. And so he paused and he leaned in and he said, well, I'm sure she had it coming. (laughs) Oh, it's so good. And this morning, I'm not going to tell you how to hear from the President of the United States, but what I am going to tell you is how you can hear God's voice through God's word. And so this morning, we are diving into this spiritual practice that every summer we come to. And so if you're new at Community of Hope, I really hope this is something new and fresh for you. If you've been here for a long time, 
Don't let the over-familiarity with Scripture be what hinders you from hearing God's voice this morning. This is so important for all of us. We really believe this is an opportunity where we're onboarding folks into what it means to be a community of hope. And this really is a hallmark of what it is to be a follower of Christ. And through the Holy Spirit, it transforms our lives. And uh, if you were with us last week, we started the Word of God Speak Bible Reading Plan. And the very first week, we began in Hebrews 1, and we've been reading a chapter every single day. And so what we're going to be doing this morning is I'm going to be teaching you a method in which we engage with Scripture, how we hear God's voice in His Word. But I'm going to take a passage of Scripture that we all read last week, and I'm going to share with you what God has spoken to me. And so I'm really hoping that in this time you will see that Scripture, it's easy access, that that isn't just for a few people, and that all people really can hear God's voice. It really reminded me, I don't know if you've been keeping up with the Bible reading plan, but I picked Hebrews chapter 1. So it was on Monday, it was the first day that we started, because I know some of you, I know you well enough, you've probably fallen off the wagon, and that's okay. That's okay. It's like the gym on January 1st. It's packed, and then by the end of the week, no one is there. I get it. New habits, new routines, they're hard, but we're going to come together, and we're going to learn together. When I was thinking about uh, this, I actually preached on this topic two years ago. And when Dale was calling me on the phone Friday and Saturday, I said, do you just need the guru to come in and just show you kind of how it's done around here? And, you know, and he had some kind of comments, but I just thought it was so funny that two years ago, we were preaching the exact same thing. And I love that. This is what we would call the SOAP journaling method. And this is an acronym, SOAP. It stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, and Prayer. And so what we're going to do for the remainder of this morning is we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 1, and we're going to look through at all these different lenses. And really, this is going to be a springboard for you this next coming week of how you can engage with Scripture and also hear God's voice. Because one of the biggest determining factors of being able to hear God's voice in God's Word is whether or not you're becoming a self-feeder of God's Word. Now, what do I mean by a self-feeder? Well, if you only eat one meal every single week, you would be malnourished, right? Right? But spiritually speaking, it's on average people attend church once every month. I mean, if we were to have glasses where we could see the spiritual health of everyone in the room, how would we look? So when we're talking about becoming self-feeders of God's word, we're saying we want to be able to read scripture for ourselves. What is God speaking to us? And that's what I love about this particular method. Scripture talks about it this way in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. It says, like newborn babies craving spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. The idea the writer is getting at is that it's cute to feed a baby, but it's not cute to spoon feed an 18-year-old. It's just, it's weird, right? You have to become a self-feeder. You have to become feeding yourself, and the same is true with Scripture, And so what I love about this uh, soap journaling method is it really teaches us how we can do this in really easy and, I think, basic steps. Because God wants us to grow up in our maturity. He wants us to be able to read God's word, to understand it, and to apply it to our lives. It's not some ancient, irrelevant text, but something that speaks to us deeply 2,000 years later. But the Bible, it can be tricky to understand. It is something that can bring up questions, but I love what Jesus says in John chapter 14, 26. He says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. Notice what Jesus is saying, that we're not just left with this ancient text to try and decipher, and it's this big, great mystery. No, Jesus is saying, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I will teach you all things that you need to know to follow me. That Jesus is saying, man, the cookies, they're on the bottom shelf. You can know who God is. I will instruct you. But how many of us in our lives when we've read scripture and we thought, well, we're not going to try to understand that. We're just going to move on. Jesus is saying he will help guide us. And so as you engage in scripture, don't rush through it. Right? This isn't the homework assignment, but man, this is where we get to come and meet with God every single day. We have a teacher who is Jesus. And I love that. It's so wonderful. So if you're new to Christian faith, maybe you've never tried this method before, this is really how you begin. This is the beginning place. It really begins with finding a place where you're not going to be disturbed. Because I don't know about you, I mean, I'm distracted all the time. My phone, emails, social media, news outlets, like I 
24-7, I can hear all of these voices. But if I'm actually going to hear God's voice through his word, I need to set time aside where I'm not disturbed, where I turn my phone off, and where I just focus on him. And so for me, the way that looks is I wake up earlier in the morning, I have a nice chair out on the patio, I make a delicious cup of coffee, and I just turn off the distractions. And so for you, you pick wherever that place is, however you remove those distractions. And the second is just to find a time that works for you. No time is greater than another. You might be a morning person, you might be an evening person. I'm the weird afternoon guy, like 10 to noon, that is my prime time. But so you pick whatever time works best for you. This is super applicable to whoever's life, wherever you're the freshest. And what I do, it's kind of weird, but I love putting things on my calendar. Like, I'll have, like, fun time scheduled on my calendar because that's just, that's how I am. I'm a little weird, right? And I will schedule my journaling. It, it will be in the calendar because the older I get, if it's not in the calendar, maybe you know this to be true, it doesn't happen, right? I could have all the best intentions, but if I don't put it in that calendar, it's, it's just not happening. So maybe for you it sounds silly, but maybe it's just something you put in the calendar, And then what I would say is begin your time with prayer. It amazes me, uh, we'll read scripture all the time, but we don't invite God, who is this great counselor, our teacher, to teach us in those moments. So if you're intimidated, if this is new for you, if you're starting this back up for the first time, just begin that time after you've picked a place, you've picked a time, just ask God, Lord, would you meet me? Would you speak in the scripture that, that I'm about to read? And you'll be amazed how he begins to speak and how he begins to move and that you get to meet with God who has a personal message for you. And that's what I love about the soap journaling method. And you're actually going to be handed on your way out a printed guide of everything that we talked about. And it's going to walk you through all of those steps. And so now what we're going to do this morning is we're going to look at our text, which is Hebrew chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. And this is what it says. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited inherited is superior to theirs. So this morning, if we were using the SOAP Bible method, this would be our passage of scripture. Notice you don't pick the whole entire chapter, you pick a few verses, and that's really what you focus on. When I was reading this this past Monday... This just jumped out on the page to me. There was something about it that I couldn't put my finger on, so I wanted to begin to explore further. That's sometimes how the Lord will work. And so what I did is then I moved down to the next, which is O for observation. So what's happening in the text? What's the background? How can I have a fuller understanding of what this passage of Scripture is talking about? That's a really great framework if you're dealing with a text that you don't know what to do that you don't understand, trying to understand the broader context will help you grasp what it's talking about. And so the book of Hebrews, this is some of what we know about it. It is a book that is addressed to a group of Jews who are now believing in Jesus, but they're beginning to drift away. They're starting to feel these society pressures, and and they're being persecuted for their faith, and so they're thinking, I don't know if this is worth it. Like, do I really believe in Christ? Is he worth this sort of sacrifice. And there are all these modern day philosophies that were happening in and around these Hebrew people and they were beginning to feel the pressure. And they were beginning to wonder, have we been deceived? Is Christ really who he says he is? Or is there something else? And I don't know about you, does that remind you of maybe the day and the age that we're living in here this morning? Because when I did, uh, it, it reminded me so much of what I see and what I hear. And one helpful nugget for me when I begin any book of the Bible, it's this free resource, it's called The Bible Project. And if you've been around Community of Hope long enough, you know this is a great little nugget that will really help you understand the broader context. Because you might might say, Brandon, I don't go to seminary, I don't have longevity in the faith, I don't understand. This is a great free resource where they do a wonderful overview of every single book in the Bible, all 66 books. It's a totally free resource. It's fantastic. It's like a seminary degree, but free. And as one who just 
completed his in four years, this is absolutely excellent. It's a lot more entertaining than those four years. Let me just tell you right now. And so I want to just give this resource to you, whether you're reading a book of the Bible a tenth time, a hundredth time, this is something I do as a personal habit. So when I started Hebrews this past week with all of you, because you were on the reading plan, uh-huh, uh-huh, this is, this is what I did. I went on, it was an eight, 11-minute video, and it just explained to me the overview of what's happening in the book of Hebrews, who it's being written to, why was it written, what's its intentions, and then that helps us understand and to be able to wrestle with the text. And so I want to recommend that to you, that when you come to books or passive scripture, you might understand that is a great free resource. But what I love about this passive scripture, and really this is the applicational part, what was God saying to me? How do I apply this scripture to my life? What I noticed in the very first phrase, it says, in the past, God spoke. And I don't know about you, but I can be obsessed with the past. And when I think about the past, it reminds me that God's word reminds us of what God has done in the past. That specifically when I read in the Old Testament and I read the New Testament, it's reminding me of what God has done and what he will do. There's a really interesting documentary that I've been just hooked on. I'm a lover of history and family of origin and all that sort of deal. And there's a really great uh, TV show I'd recommend to you. It's called Finding Your Roots. And the host is uh, Henry Louis Gates Jr., And in this show, it's this documentary, he interviews these famous people and these groups of families, and they dive deep into their family of origin. And they have this group of genealogists and experts that they go back as far as all the information will allow on their lineage. And then they come and they present what they call them the book of life, which I find ironic because scripture is referenced as the book of life. But in the show, it's all of their genealogy, and they open this book up, and they begin to discover about their history, about their past about who they are, and every single time it ends in tears. It ends with this emotional moment where people, they start connecting the dots of, oh, that's why I am the way I am. Oh, that makes so much sense. I was was wondering why I have a proclivity towards this thing, or man, I always wished I knew who my grandfather was. There's all these connections that begin to happen. And when we begin to read God's word, it's the same for us. Specifically in the Old Testament, we see that it is showing us God's past faithfulness through his word, how he spoke to his people, it says, through the prophets. But now we have someone greater. The son of God and his name is Jesus. And I want us to notice in this passage of scripture, it says, in these last days he has spoken to us by his son, who he appointed heir of all things, and through him also he made the universe. The son is the exact radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of of his being, sustaining all things by what his powerful word. What I love about this passage of scripture is it's not only showing us God's past faithfulness, that he is speaking to his people and he is now speaking to us through his son, Jesus Christ, who we believe to be the word made flesh, that we get to have this relationship with him. I love that this passage of scripture reminds us that Jesus is not a way to know God, but he's the way. To know God. He is the only way. He is the full representation of God in human flesh. Because I don't know about you, the idea of being able to know who God is fully, many people wouldn't believe that. They would think he's he's too big, he's too pure, he's too holy. How can we know him? Because when God was speaking in the past, the prophets and the teachers, it wasn't good enough. And so he sent his son, who is the fulfillment of all things. And he said, I will send you someone who will be your counselor, your helper, and your guide. And so we get to know who Christ is. He is the perfect representation of God, and we get to know truth, because truth is the person of Jesus Christ. And when I think about my past, and God's past faithfulness, not only in Scripture, but in my own life, it helps me better understand what's going on in my present reality. Because many of the reasons why we're so obsessed with our past and genealogy and family of origin is because of the current situations we're in right now in the present. Because when we begin to understand our past, it helps us understand why we are where we are. God's word helps us better understand God's work in the present moment. Because many of us, we will measure our life by what we experience. But I don't know about you, my experience is running out. And so I go to other sources to learn from them and to get experience and wisdom from them. 
This is something that's just natural to our human condition. But there's only, only so many experiences that we can have. So the question becomes, what do we turn to? Who do we go to in our time, in our need for help? When I was thinking about this, I was looking on uh, Facebook because, you know, it's the great author of all truth. And um, I was looking at what people would recommend as their guide. When they run out of experience, who do they go to? Okay? Buckle in. So we have life coaches, spiritual guides, Dr. Oz, the all-important Google, the Kardashians, the Internet. It, the list, it just goes on and on and on. Because when we run out of experience, we go to someone for help. We look for it in many places. But where do we go? See, that determines a lot. As I said earlier, I'm obsessed with YouTube. I absolutely, I love YouTube. And Haley's car had broken. Her driver's side door handle had broke. And like any good man, I said, don't worry, baby. I got it. And so I went on YouTube and I looked up this video. The video is about 15 minutes long. I ordered the part. I thought, not a problem. This is going to be a quick fix. Now, I should have learned from all of my previous experience when I have done this that like a 30-minute clip on YouTube is like a two-day trial for me. <laughs> you ever been there? Any of my DIYers out there? And so when the part came in, I told Haley, I'll be back in 15 minutes. And she kind of gave me this look, you know, you've gotten that look like, yeah, right. And so I came, and this was, this was uh, not my first time having repaired this handle, so I felt pretty good. I had some prior experience. I watched the YouTube video, right? I, didn't, I was going for some help here. And 15 minutes later, came back in the house, and I was like, that bad boy is done. You are welcome. And I remember thinking, she looked at me like, no, seriously, you're done? Like, it works? And then she didn't believe me, so she had to go outside, get in the car, and then start pulling on the handle. I was like, you basically have a new car. I mean, you're welcome. We, we don't even need one. But I mean, where do we go when we need experience? Where do we go when we need a word, when we need wisdom, when we need knowledge? Because different voices, remember, they hold different weight. And so where we go looking for answers, it's so vitally important. I love what one author, John Eldridge, he says about this idea of trying to understand our present reality and our past. And this is what he says. I want to read this to you. He says, something important seems to be going on. I mean, good things are happening and sometimes beautiful and sometimes we meet and fall in love and you find work that is very fulfilling, but tragic things seem to happen too. And you fall out of love and perhaps the person falls out of love with you and work begins to feel like a punishment. And everything starts to feel like a routine. It's almost like we're in the middle of a story that is sometimes wonderful, sometimes awful, often a confusing mixture of both, and we haven't have a clue to make sense of it all. It's like we're holding in our hands pages torn from a book, and these pages are the days of our lives, fragments of a story. They seem important, or at least we hope that they are, but what does it all mean? If only we could find the book containing the rest of the story. And I think what John Eldridge is pointing at is we all come to these moments in our life where we're at the end of ourselves, the end of our knowledge, the end of our experience, the end of our wisdom. And who do we turn to? Why does it feel like sometimes we've showed up to a movie 45 minutes late and we have no idea what's happening? And he's talking about this idea of what if we could find a book that has the rest of the pages in it? And I would commend to you this morning, we do. But are we willing to open it up and to hear from God himself? Because he has a word for you. And that's what I love about scripture, is that it's God speaking to you and he's speaking to me. And what I think about the past and I think about the present, it gives me hope for the future. Because when I read God's word, man, it gives me hope for the future. Because if you'd have asked me two days ago, Brandon, are you feeling hopeful? I would have said, mm, not too much. Because as I said on Friday, Dale gave me a call on the day off and said, hey, like, I'm hurting. You might have to sub in. I know you're going to have to drive back to Lake Worth and do it there in connections class, but, like, I need you. And I was like, listen, I got it. No problem. And then I hung up the phone, and then the anxiety inside of me started swelling like a monsoon. You ever been there? And I'm one of those people where I'm kind of like a duck, like on the outside as I cruise through the water. It's majestic. But underneath, I am paddling for my life. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how I am. And so if I had like a panic button, I would have started pressing the panic button in that moment. But I just remember Haley was like, listen, you're freaking out. You're going to be fine. What, have you prayed about it? And have you read? And I was like, don't tell me what to do. What are you talking about? And then, of course, I started to pray about it and read God's word. 
because she was right. And this is the passage I landed on. I kid you not. This is Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Me simply being open to hearing from God, he spoke to me. Not in an audible way, but he said, Brandon, do you, do you trust me? Yes, Lord, I trust you. Brandon, have I ever left you? No, Lord, you've never left me. Well, then why would I leave you now? Trust in me. I will go with you. And I just remember on Saturday my anxiety just washing away. But I could have missed it. I could have just followed my own hard-heartedness and nodded over Scripture, not begin to pray, and I would have missed what God had to say to me. And the same is true for each one of you. God has a word for you through his word. But are we willing and able to hear his voice, to carve out time? It's easy to forget that God is speaking to us. It's easy to think he doesn't have a special word. It seems impossible with all the bad news that's swirling around us. But what I have known in my own life is that God's word is an anchor for my soul. That when everything else is turmoil, it is what grounds me to the truth, the person of truth, who is Jesus Christ. And the last part of the SOAP method is prayer. And so we're going to end our time in prayer. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, as we have read your word, we realize, God, that your word, it's an anchor to our soul. That, God, you are not only available to us, not only have you made a way through your son, Jesus, but, Lord, you're continuing to speak. And, God, when we look at your past faithfulness, Lord, it gives us not only hope for our future, but the present reality that we're in. Lord, we come this morning with all sorts of hurts, habits, and hang-ups, and, God, you are the only remedy. We're out of experience, Lord. We're out of wisdom. We're out of strength. And so, Lord, we turn to you. We're not going to be anxious about anything because, God, you are with us and you are for us and you are not against us. God, we pray it in your name. Amen.